I remember over the last couple of years, we've had um, elections, elections come and go like every two years, typically, because we've been talking a lot about the House, because the House of Representatives has been seeing a huge change uh, ever since 2018. There have been a lot of people who've joined the House to um, take out legacy members of Congress and replace them with some new blood. Now, some of that blood is good. Now, we have people like Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, Ilan Omar. We have a Katie Porter. Um, you know, she's been in for a little longer. AOC. We have people like that. And that's great. But there's also another group of people who have joined. Right. We have our Madison Cawthorns. What was it? He went to Hitler's like vacation home and said it was the greatest thing of, in, that he's done in his life. Just just curious things that and he cheered on the um, the riot at the Capitol. Just very, very curious person. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who says that the Jews are using their space lasers to cause fires in California. But one person that we're going to be talking about today is Lauren Bober, who comes from the really big congressional district. The, I think the southern big congressional district in um, Colorado. Um, it's a safe district, so she's not going to be losing her seat anytime soon, at the very least to a Democrat or something along those lines. But she is a very curious person. Curious indeed. Now, I remember we looked back into Lauren Bober's history, and you know what was like super interesting? Was that we found out that Lauren Bober is... The wife to, I forget his name, but like, you know, Mr. Bober, obviously, right? That, but that's not curious. The curious thing about it, you're right, she is from Rifle, Colorado, which is fucking hilarious, okay? She is from Rifle, Colorado. Here, one second. Sorry. I was texting Kanye. It's their birthday stream, and we were going to be joining, um, we we're going to be joining them for their birthday stream. I have no opinions on Kanye's physical appearance, nor do I have any opinions on anybody else who streams physical appearance. What's curious about Bober is that back when she was 17, because there's like a criminal report on this, back when she was 17, she was at a bowling alley. Her now husband, who is I think 21 or 23 at the time, whipped out his dick in front of her and uh her like group of friends and then he was arrested for it and apparently she like she like liked what he saw what she saw so then they got married like sometime later this is real this is true i'm not joking this actually happened which is probably one of the most curious backstories of any um house member at the moment um except for maybe cawthorn cawthorn's kind of crazy can i find uh can I find the report really quick? Lauren Bober's husband did jail time for lewd exposure in a bowling alley um, when she was there. They're in a bowling alley in 2004, and he, he whipped his dick out to her and her friend in a bowling alley. So yeah, that's, um, it was love at first sight, man. She was also found gu guilty of resisting arrest. She does seem like the type to try and fight the cops over something. <laughs> yeah, you think those balls are good? Check out these. So Bober's an interesting character and she's a, she's a right wing nutcase because she's had some very interesting things to say um, while she was doing a talk um, for a campaign break back in Colorado in, in her district, which I mean, that's nice at least. She was at least speaking to her constituents. Uh, she wasn't saying the best things because one thing that she's doing is trying to say that uh, Biden isn't the real president. Let's just take a look at this clip really quick. And the last time I was with President Trump, well, I did have a fancy little red dress to show off. <laughs> Sexual harassment. Yeah, when I was with Trump, I had the I had the best little red dress. I'm like, uh, what? Huh? I was sitting in his office in Florida, the new White House. Yeah. <laughs> the real White House. Yeah. The real White House. Yeah. That's where everybody seems to be. I don't know. Fucking ew. It is a little bit of an ew. You can fix her. No, you can't, Rez. Stop. Yeah, she was wearing her best new skirt to go see Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh no you guys remember when like marjorie taylor green like like felt up ca her cardboard cut out of trump that she brings everywhere with her you guys remember that right we, we never did a story on it if we're doing random stories from like the the new republican congress people then i want to i want to look at look at this one real quick yeah, yeah. He's, he is he's fantastic this guy right here is great he's standing up in there in the mucky swamp diane always has him in the <laughs> 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 thank, thank you, Marjorie. She was 17? Yeah, no, she was underage. That's the really big part of that story where her like now husband whipped out his dick is because she was underage when it happened. She was 17, yeah. Which is, it's just, it's just so curious. It's just so incredibly curious. And she's still pushing the big lie, uh, which is that the election was rigged. She's still doing it. It's crazy how these people have the same exact talking points and they'll never switch from this. 
And I asked him, what else can we be doing? He said, everything you're doing. What you're doing is exactly what you need to be doing. Objecting on January 6th was absolutely the role of Congress. Those states that illegally mailed out millions of ballots changed election laws outside of the state legislature that was unconstitutional and illegal. And now, because Congress didn't have enough guts to actually do their job correctly, now we're chasing 10,000 ballots here and 20,000 ballots there. But millions of ballots were mailed out illegally right in front of all of our faces. What the fuck are you talking about? I would, you're right, name one, name one law that's illegal. What do you mean, unconstitutional and illegal? Oh my gosh, it's not even just unconstitutional. It's super illegal and unconstitutional. Who could have seen this coming? This is just not true. Legislatures passed laws that would open up things like you being able to get mailed ballots because the pandemic was there and they still want people to be able to go out and vote, or at least good politicians do. Lots of Republicans didn't. Um, because they benefit from that, typically. With that being said, the election was not rigged. And yeah, you were chasing a couple thousand ballots. You know what happened when they tried to chase a couple thousand ballots in um, Arizona? Trump lost ground. You know what happened when they tried to chase a couple uh, a couple thousand ballots in um, Georgia? Trump lost ground. At the end of the day, like when, when this happens, the vote was more or less pretty correct. Um, and even though some states were pretty close, I mean, Trump lost. And there's nothing that you can really do about that. You can get upset, but I mean... He was not illegally kicked out of being the president. Joe Biden is not the illegal president. Um, And you can just keep coping and seething, I guess. That's not the worst part of what's going on here. It actually gets much worse. So let's talk about this really quick, okay? So Lauren Boeber not, didn't only want to talk about Biden and Trump, okay? She wanted to talk about the squad as well. And she wanted to hone in on one member of the squad in particular. Can you give a guess? Can you get a guess? Take a guess who she wanted to um who she wanted to really hone in and talk about from the squad who she really thinks will rile up her base for for some support. The one with the funny hat? QAnon MILFs. I had a few QAnon MILFs in my day. Omar, it was indeed Omar. So Lauren Bober recalls a story that she had when she was in the presence of Ilan Omar in Capitol Police, and she she's gonna walk you through her little like stand up bit. Let, let's hear the lady out. I have an Ilhan story for you. So, <laughs> oh, man. so uh, the other night on the House floor was not the, my first Jihad Squad moment. Uh, so that's so interesting. That's so cute. The Jihad Squad, huh? Wow, Jihad Squad. I wonder. I wonder what that's about. Hmm. Who could have seen this coming? Well, let's listen to a little bit more of it. I was getting into an elevator with one of my staffers. And he and I, are, we're leaving the Capitol, we're going back to my office, and we get in the elevator, and I see a Capitol Police officer running hurriedly to the elevator. I see fret all over his face, and he's reaching, and I'm like, what? I can't, the door's shutting, like, I can't, I can't open it. Like, what's happening? I look to my left, and there she is, Ilhan Omar. Oops. And I said, well... She doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. Haha, <laughs> 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 so funny. Whoa, there's the Capitol Police. And I was like, oh no, is she gonna bomb me? She's gonna suicide bomb me? Oh wait, she doesn't have a backpack. Haha, <laughs> bro, what? is wrong with you pov you're a conservative and you don't want to be called racist if, if you don't want to be called racist if you don't want to be called like say that you hate muslim people then you wouldn't be pulling shit like this how she not face consequences she literally just said this so it hasn't made it through congress yet so i'm not sure she may be she may be shitted on um because she pulled this but it is definitely really bad yeah i got the whole squad laughing <laughs> One floor to go, and was like, ah, do I say it or not? And looked over, and I said, oh look, the Jihad Squad decided to show up for work today. Oh. Woo! 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 Yeah. So I was sitting in the elevator, and Ilan Omar was just literally minding her own business, and then I called her a slur. Woo! Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what absolute goons, dude. What awful human being. How can you unironically un sit there and be like, yeah, so she, she looked like a terrorist. Woo, 
yay. Wow, it's so funny. You, man, conservative, com the, the right is getting better at comedy and the left is scared. I'm scared, that's why I'm, that's why I'm talking about this because I'm just so scared of them truly making a, the great um, cultural comeback off the backs of their killer comedy. Haha, <laughs> I saw a white male and he was, was he gonna start a pedo ring? <laughs> well, I, I saw a white male in a coat earlier today and I was like, whoa, hope he doesn't do a mass shooting. Woo, yay. Nice. No, it's just her staffers on Twitter that talk for her. She She's not tough in person. She doesn't, yes. <laughs> So it's just her staffers who stay stuff on 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 Twitter in real life. When I call her slurs in the elevator, huh, she doesn't even try bomb me. OK, <laughs> there's a little bit of interactions with these folks. There. Well, I saw Matt Gates in the elevator and the Capitol Police officer was was running in and I turned to my left and I saw Matt Gates and I was like, well, there are no children here. <laughs> Who <-ah! laughs> What a zinger. Yee, brother. And so obviously, this didn't go over well outside of her room full of like 30 people who were also racist. And so she came back online, all right, after getting like shitted on. And she probably got some emails, some like Republican higher ups who are like, this is not a good look, chief. Because it, it, it's not a good look. If, if you want to, you know, they came off the whole Donald Trump's racist, Donald Trump hates Muslims. We don't hate Muslims. We, we just hate terrorism. And it just happens to mean that we call all Muslims terrorists. It's just, you know, it's weird like that. That didn't go over too well from an optical standpoint. So she had to put out an apology, which was this, which is so fucking funny. I apologize to anyone in the Muslim community I offended with my comment about Representative Omar. I have reached out to her office to, um, to speak with her directly. There are plenty of policy differences to focus on without this unnecessary distraction. <laughs> I, I saw we it was really funny when I saw you in the elevator and I started screaming Allahu Akbar but now that I'm actually getting flack for it I know I, I've come to the realization that what I did was wrong for me politically so I'd like to say sorry girl water under the bridge babe it, it's just wild to me how they think that <laughs> it's just wild to me how they think that this is just something that you can just do you can just get away with and it's even more sad that this is something that's so acceptable among like republicans that they just cheer this this is something that they just cheer Woo, yeah let's get her Woo. yeah i don't listen guys i don't want my racism to distract from my garbage politics so i will have to say sorry um didn't mean it it's just it's just so sad it's so ridiculous that this is something that's actually happening and i talk about this every once in a while but i do think it's going to get worse because as republicans get pushed into the corner and as it becomes more and more difficult for them to actually make strides in the country because they're gonna they're going to become more and more irrelevant on like a national standpoint as the country changes because we're getting less conservative and there's more brown people so you know and they typically aren't treated too well by conservatives um, exhibit A right in front of us. So they typically don't vote for them. And so as they move into the future, they're going to see the power that they have slip even more. And so now they are. And so basically 2020 was a test run for what they're going to be doing in the future, which is basically every time they lose an election, they say it's rigged. And even every time they win an election, they'll say it's rigged because the Democrats wouldn't have gotten any votes if it was a fair election, I guess. And this is what we're going to be dealing with. And that's going to lead people to be more violent. Because let's be honest, if you actually believe Lauren Bower here, because it's stupid just listening to her. But if you think about it, like actually, like if you genuinely believe that the Democrats are stealing elections, that they're uh, putting through all of these fake ballots and they're forcing election results that aren't true and aren't real and they're stuffing ballot boxes. That's like an that's a complete affront to our entire country. That's jeopardizing the entire country. If that's actually the case, it's not. But that's a massive thing. And obviously people will take that seriously. It's no different from people from like Tim Pool, who does Civil War drumming. Like, oh, they're, they're going to come. Biden is going to send black people to your house and they will kill you. And the police won't do anything about it because they'll be like, whoa, I'm black. And the police will be like, oh, no, we can't stop black people. Historically, we've always we've always treated black people better than white people. No. So, yeah. Um, and they're like made up wild fantasy world. Um, 
that they live in, if they believe this, they're going to get more violent. And I, we've been seeing it tick up. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere with right wing militias, with right wing violence. Um, it's not going to be something that's just like a little blip. Ever since 9-11, right wing violence has been going up and it's been going up steadily and staying pretty consistent. And that's not going to be any different because of rhetoric like this, because of people like Bober and the people who support her keep this stuff going and only makes the country worse. Do you think we'll see the collapse of our democracy in our lifetimes if this trend continues? Um, no, I don't think so. America's pretty like our institutions are like incredibly resilient. They're very strong. Now, there are like a lot of problems with them, but they're pretty strong, right? Because like a coup attempt by the president of the United States and his supporters like got completely shut down. There's lots of things going on that will not allow some stuff like that to happen. There are like a lot of really shitty people who are Republicans, but there are a lot of Republicans who um aren't this insane um who won't support stuff like this and that's why the supreme court struck down all of donald trump's attempts to overturn election results because obvious and all of those results and all of those decisions weren't like the democrats plus like two republic it was unanimous decisions it's going to be it's going to be strained very heavily but being strained and collapsing are two like really big differences there's a big difference between those two things because i do think republicans are going to be grinding up against the very foundations of our country with the way they want to take it but thankfully they're running out of time which is pretty cool because people like gen z are starting to <clears throat> be more part of the uh the political process and they're really not republican and they don't put up with that shit at all i mean i'm not saying that's a good thing but a lot of like older generations are starting to like pass away and not be politically relevant anymore which is interesting with that being said i, I don't think we're going to experience like a, co a collapse but we will um there, there are going to be problems she said the story isn't even real that's hilarious she's just making shit up the fact that this buffoon looks down when she sees me at the Capitol, this uh, whole story is made up. <laughs> Sad she thinks bigotry gets her clout. Anti-Muslim big bigotry isn't funny and shouldn't be normalized. Congress can't be a place where hateful and dangerous Muslim tropes get no condemnation. This is hilarious. You can't tell me that this isn't funny because Marjorie Taylor Greene did the exact same thing. Remember when she was like drumming about how she's going to debate? She's going to do a debate with um, AOC and how she said she talked to AOC about debating her. And not only that, remember how she ran on how much she hates the Green New Deal? And she said to debate AOC, I'm going to start reading the Green New Deal to see what's actually in it for our debate. Like, it's it's hilarious. And then AOC had to come out and be like, she never spoke to me. She never talked to me. This never happened. It was so good. Why do they just lie? They're so pathetic. They're such losers. How can you actually pull this off? It's so incredible how weak they are.